Okay, so let's say that the offset parent matrix didn't work for you for any reason. I'm going to go ahead and take this whole thing that I built and delete it and close this. Instead, I'm going to go into my constraint menu and open up my parent constraint option box. The parent constraint is great because while it maintains an offset, it will leave two objects apart and let them control each other. If I uncheck this box, it will snap two objects together. So that's what we're going to be leveraging here for method number two. And this parent constraint method is what we use to do all the time for every single control. So I'm going to show you how it works and you're going to say, oh, now I understand why the offset parent matrix is so revolutionary. I'm going to start by making a box curve for the root control. So we'll call this one my root CTL. And before I move it anywhere, I'm going to leave it right here at the origin and group it to itself with control G. So now I've got my root control and I've got this group node called group one. So let me call this one root group. I'm going to select the root control first and then I'm going to use my control key to select the root group node. Please note that the root control itself is not selected. Here's my parent constraint. Uh, by the way, if you're having trouble finding the constraint menu, make sure that your rigging menu is set over here in menu sets. You may still be set to modeling. That's okay, just move over to rigging, constrain, parent, option box. So I've got maintain offset unchecked. I'm going to hit apply and you'll see that that will automatically snap the box up to the root joint. However, it didn't actually snap the box up to the root joint. The box, this root control curve, still thinks it's at the origin. The thing that moved is this group node. The group node has this constraint in it. I'm not going to use this constraint. This is just something that I leveraged to snap my box up to the joint. So I can take the constraint node and delete it. Now I'm going to repeat that process for the rest of the controls. So here's my spine lower control. We'll call this one spine low CTL. I will group it to itself and I'll call this one spine low group. I'll take the spine low joint, the spine low group, and apply my parent constraint. Now I can delete that constraint. And I'm going to take this group node, this spine low group, and make it the child of the root control curve. So you'll see my hierarchy is going to go group node curve, group node curve, and again we'll just repeat this process. So this will be spine, let's rename you, spine mid control. I will group it to itself. This group will become my spine mid group. And now I'm going to take the spine mid joint, the spine mid group, and parent constraint. Then delete the parent constraint and make the group node the child of the spine low control. Okay, one more. Let's make another circle. This one is going to be spine high CTL. We'll nest it inside a group node. This will become my spine high group. Going to select my joint first, my group node second, apply, delete the constraint, and make the group node the child of the previous curve. Okay, last one in the spine. This will become the neck control and I will nest it inside a neck group. So now I'm going to click the neck joint and oops, not the neck control, the neck group node, parent constraint, delete the constraint, neck group becomes the child of the spine high control. So that takes care of my spine 
and before I do the arm I'm just going to take a moment to look at these curves. Right now the curve has an orientation that exactly matches that of the joint. So when I click onto the joint and I click onto the control curve, the pivot point is in the exact same place, which does make it a little bit easier for me to edit this. I can just rotate it to a place that I think is going to be nice. Let's turn my character geometry on. Maybe right there is good. Maybe I'll scale it in a little bit. Um, that will put information here in the channel box, but when I freeze transformations, the pivot point will reset so that it matches the joint again. So because I've got all of these group nodes, I am free to reset my curves. Um, but I still also have the option of working with their control vertices. I just need to be sure that I'm not going to select my skeleton or my geometry by accident. So if you like working with control vertices, that is totally an option. And since we've gone through the work of making everybody the parent of the next joint down, this might actually be a good method. So we'll pull that up. Now as you can see, this does take a little bit longer than the previous method. So I'm not going to get through the whole thing in one video. What I'm going to do instead is just pause this so that I can make the left arm. And when I've got that in place, I will come back to you and talk about the right arm. So just assume that it's going to be a curve and a group node for every joint in the upper body. And I'm going to do that and come right back to you. Okay, so I used my control vertex editing to adjust all of these curves. And I also made a set of new curves and group nodes for the arm. So again, I'm going to turn off the geometry and turn on the skeleton. And it'll be the same thing. There's my clavicle joint. I will control select my clavicle group. Here's my parent constraint and I will I meant to apply, but I added, just open that up again. Shoulder to the shoulder group. There's my elbow to the elbow group. And finally, there's my wrist to the wrist group and apply. And now I can take these parent constraints and delete all of them. So that puts all of these controls in the place that I wanted. Again, I'm going to go into control vertex mode and edit them. I will again turn on my geometry, template my joints, and because I don't want to make this video a thousand hours long, I will do the wrist by grabbing the control vertices, rotating, and scaling. And you're going to assume that I do the same thing for the elbow, the shoulder, and the clav, but I'm not going to show you. So I'm going to cut away here, and when I come back, I will finish up with the right arm. Okay, so here is my left clav group node. I am going to control D to duplicate and then do another search and replace names where I am searching for LF and replacing with RT. That gets me to my right side. Let's get rid of that one. Don't want to be messy. So now for the right side, let's turn those joints back on. I will select the right clavicle, joint and control select the right clavicle group. Let's find my parent constraint again and apply. It will look like all of the controls kind of snap into the right place. Never trust it. So I'll do the shoulder next to the shoulder group. Good. Then we'll do the elbow next to the elbow group. And then finally the wrist joint to the wrist group. And now I can delete all of these parent constraints. Last but certainly not least, 
I want to connect the clavicle controls to the mid joint control, mid spine control, this one. So let me just fold these up. I'll take the left clavicle group and drop it on the mid spine control. The right clavicle group onto the mid spine control because you always want to go group node curve, group node curve. So here's the mid spine control, that's the curve, then we go to the group nodes, so on and so forth. Now, ooh, look, I somehow added a keyframe. Let's delete that. Now, the last thing that I want to do is I've got all of these group nodes, and the group nodes can do some really nasty things to my rig because they can still move around. I would like to avoid them being moved. So I'm going to go back to my select by name option. I'm going to put in a star GRP, star, press enter, and that's going to select all of the group nodes that are currently in the scene because I named them all GRP. With all of the group nodes selected, I'm going to go to my channel box. I'm just going to grab all of their translate, rotate, and scale channels, and in my right click menu, I am going to lock and hide selected. This will prevent animators from finding those group nodes and doing bad things to them. So the final step in setting up a hierarchy, the old fashioned way that I've always had to teach before, is to use group nodes in association with each and every control curve, and then to lock and hide those group nodes so that people can't mess with them later on. So it's a little more work. It should get you exactly the same result. I would try the offset parent matrix script first and see if that works for you, and if it doesn't, you'll just go back and do things the old-fashioned way. Not a problem. Okay, in the next video, we're going to start with having these controls that we've made control the joints. We're almost there. We are so close, and it is going to be so exciting. See you soon.